All right, it's Menembring again. In this video, we are going to look a little bit further again at the 2020 DBQ rubric. For those of you who haven't seen the previous videos, this exploration of the DBQ rubric is designed to help you achieve as many points as possible on the updated 2020 DBQ rubric. If you're taking AP US history, AP European history, or AP modern world history, this applies. So hopefully it'll help. Any examples I use are probably going to be from AP world because that is what I teach. But if you've taken another class that still should work. All right, let's look at analysis and reasoning point number one and point number two. So I'm going to share this with you. And again, this avail is available on the College Board website. So as I scroll down through the rubric, you have three available analysis and reasoning points. I'm going to look at the first two. Remember in the previous rubric before the pandemic, you only had one opportunity to do this and it was a lot more difficult to get. OK, you can. It says this for one document, explain how or why the document's point of view, purpose, uh, historical situation and or audience is relevant to an argument. OK, and then the second one is the exact same. You just do it for another document. OK, now. I've talked about this in other videos, but I want to just emphasize that you have an incredible opportunity here in this exam. And the reason I say that is because in the previous rubric, you had to do it for three documents to get one point. Now you do it for one document, you get one point. You do it for another document, you get another point. In other words, it is a lot more easily attained. Now, the other videos that I have specifically for each one of those points, the, the context, the audience, the point of view and the purpose, you, you can watch those later and those go into a little bit more detail if you decide to do point of view, for example. In this video, I'm going to just explore a little bit of like what I would do if I was taking this test, and that is being efficient. OK, so the key here is that your ability to read through those documents and annotate them as you're taking the test in a quick and efficient way is really going to determine whether or not you're able to get these two points, because if you're reading this document, let's say you're reading document four and you are looking at the sourcing information, you have never heard of that person, you're not exactly sure what's going on in the specific time period, but you know the position that that person has or you know who they're talking to, or perhaps you know uh, a little bit about what the goal is based on what you're reading or the purpose. Well, as you read, you really need to make shorthand notations. And, and on this test, you can print out the documents. Now, I'll give you tips on a later video on what to do about printing and all that stuff. But let's just say you have it in front of you, either on your screen or in person. I would have a separate piece of paper if I don't have the physical documents printed and I would be making quick notes. I'd have a table pre set up for document one, two, three, four, and five. And I would make notes about, uh, you know, the audience. I'd make notes about the, the, the context, the, the point of view, the purpose. If I knew them, okay? So again, if I'm reading doc four and I have no idea what the point of view of this person is, I'm not gonna do point of view for doc four. I would only suggest writing down notes for stuff that is immediately clear to you and just write down shorthand notes. Only you have to understand this so you can really quickly go through and write those things as you read the documents. That way you don't have to go back and reread the documents and you certainly don't have to go back and, and try to figure out what the point of view is. You don't have to do the point of view for any of the documents. That's the key here. If you are really, really strong in content knowledge, I would suggest you do the context for every one of the documents or at least attempt it. Remember, the way they grade this is it's called asset based grading. And that means that they don't grade you down because you messed up or because you got something wrong. They just ignore that. You don't get points for it. So if you attempted to do context, for example, for all five documents and you just whiffed it on three of them, guess what? You still get analysis points one and two because you got it right twice. And that's all that you have to do. Um, and again, this is where your content knowledge really comes in because if you happen to know a little bit about I don't know, they're imperializing in India and you know what the situation was with the British Raj and whatever else. You can easily put in that content knowledge to get the historical context for analysis reasoning point number one. The key is you have to explain why those things are significant. Why is it significant that this is going on at the time this document was written? 
Why is it significant that this person is in this position as they are saying these words? You can't just identify like, here's the context. So what? Fantastic. You're, you're watching this video in the context of a worldwide pandemic. So what? Maybe you're just bored. Well, that's probably not the truth. You're probably watching this video because you're trying to prepare for the AP exam and you don't have a teacher who's physically in front of you teaching you. So you're watching little quick clips or how to videos on, on, on writing analysis reasoning number one and two. So again, you can't just identify it. You've got to explain why it matters and specifically how it ties to your argument. That is how you get those points. So you got basically two to three steps here. One, identify whatever letter you're doing and you're going to be writing shorthand notes as you annotate that's going in there and then when you write your essay you're looking at those notes and tying that to your specific argument that's points number two and three right there or or, or what your tasks two and three as you do analysis in one and two sorry all the numbers and acronyms are confusing but basically again you're going to identify the audience or whatever letter you're doing and explain why that audience is significant to your arguments okay so that can be one really well written sentence or it can be two broken up maybe even three sentences it doesn't really have to be super long but it needs to be enough that you clearly explain to the reader i know why it matters that this speech was given in the context of reforms for industrialization in england in 1832 okay why is that relevant why does that matter well it wouldn't be the same Right. You explain that it wouldn't be the same as if it was given to a group of kindergartners in the 21st century. Right. OK. Again, I have videos on each of those letters uh, for analysis reasoning point one. This is more designed to strategize as you take the test. Again, what you're going to do shorthand notes on a pre uh, pre laid out table that you have for every document. Only do the letters that you know. Only do the documents that are easy for you to identify. Don't spend a bunch of time trying to figure out all four of them for all five documents. Not worth your time. Be efficient, people. My recommendation is context. If I'm not going to do context, if I try to do point of view, I would probably do audience at the same time as point of view, because if I screw up point of view, maybe I'll get audience. But you got to tie it to that argument. If you don't have a thesis, all this is out the window. All right, people. The last video I'm going to make is analysis and reasoning point number three. I hope this has been helpful. Please subscribe, comment, and let me know how I can help going forward. Have a great day.